Right, Teleauto champs. Now, this is the test I've been waiting to try since I got the RTX 4090. I'm going to compare it to the M1 MacBook Pro 16 Wolf. Yes, the M1 Max. This is purely selfish, this video, because I use the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 for all my video editing because it is the best and fastest for what I do. Obviously, I make videos for YouTube and I make HDR videos. That's an important stipulation there because if it was just like SD videos, maybe the PC would be better. But certainly for what I do using ProRes RAW HEVC H.264 and outputting that stuff, mostly ProRes content to 10-bit HEVC HDR content for YouTube, the MacBook Pro is the fastest yes it's faster than the rtx 3090 desktop believe me for what i do it is and that's because of those media engines right the hardware acceleration that it has that works with prores hr264 and hfvc it's not only that the macbook pro has one of the best displays you're going to get period not just for laptops and when you're dealing with hdr content you need a hdr display and mac os works with hdr and you know final cut is really good with hdr let me give you the tip right now you try to do what i do in final cut in premiere even on the mac with the media encoders it's like no you can't do it well you can if you want to wait 20 minutes for renders that take two minutes on you know final cut and that's because it doesn't use the hardware acceleration going from the prores to you know 10 bit hgvc HDR. But there is a new Premiere Pro. Now I have a HDR display on my PC. We've got the latest NVIDIA GPU. We've got the latest Premiere Pro version. So now I'm going to test again because I have no loyalties to anyone. I don't care. Whatever is the fastest and the best I will use currently that is the Mac and Final Cut. Now let's see with the latest Adobe HDR display on the PC with an RTX 4090. And I have a 12900K RTX 4090. I have the tough version, the Asus tough version. This is one of Azusa's like premium RTX 4090s, super quiet, excellent cooling, has a 33% extra power limit, very premium. I have a couple of videos on it, go check it out. But let's see, right now, can I use a PC now? Is it going to be faster and better than the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16? All right, so as I discussed before, the reason I had MacBook Pro 16 M1 was because it was literally fastest for what I use, you know, ProRes RAW, HEVC, H.264, etc. So let's see if this 4090 makes a difference. This is a new version of Premiere Pro. So let's see here if it's viable for me to now go to an RTX 4090, which I may do now. So what's going on here? All right, so we have ProRes RAW there, these files here. So I'll chuck the ProRes RAW in. Do ProRes RAW 23 frames per second. That's how I output. I'm going to change this to my 2x1, which is 4096. I think it's uh, 2048. Yeah, 2048. We'll just do that. And we want here not Rec 709. We want HLG. Okay, so HLG, ProRes, HQ, that's fine. Everything's good here. And that is my project. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to drag the ProRes in. We want to keep existing settings, drag this oh, ProRes in. And I'm going to make here the exact same project I've done in on my Mac. And we're going to test the render speeds on what happens here. So it was five minutes. So now we have it exactly how I had it set up with my uh, MacBook Pro. And we're going to test the render speeds and whether it's viable. So first thing is I've just got to put my adjustments. So because I'm outputted to HDR. Mate, what have they done to Premiere? I don't know what the hell's going on with this thing. Effects control, that's the one I want. Click on this one. We want to change this to Vlog. There's nothing I have to do with that. Nothing I have to do with that. They are both already HDR. Now, one thing about Premiere, this is a 1000 nit monitor. And so far, it just doesn't look right. But we'll just do the adjustment, see if it works out. Because the good thing about the Mac is you've got the HDR display and Final Cut handles HDR well and Mac OS handles HDR well. So if I can't see this properly on this screen, it's a problem, right? One thing I found out about this is I'm downloading a lot here, but also I had to download ProRes Reader or whatever from Apple. Otherwise, Premiere does not even read ProRes. Now, already in Final Cut, I'd be halfway there already, but let's just lift this up, this footage. Lift this down. Okay, it's starting to look decent now. It's weird what I have to do because it's HDR now. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, so that's looking decent. Now, going from that to that, you can see, yeah, all right, so it looks decent now to me. All right, so I'll just do some corrections here. We need some contrast, maybe some vibrance. Oh, yeah, yep, that looks that looks fine. 
Uh, I'll just add some contrast. Yep, that, that looks good. Like, I've probably oversaturated, but it doesn't matter. It looks good. Like, I can see this is HDR content. This is HDR display. This looks good. All right, so I've got a drop frames indicator here, which is green. I'm playing it back with the color graded ProRes RAW. No problems playing that back. And actually, what I will do is bring up this task manager and see what, what's happening. Let's play back this ProRes RAW. So I'm playing that back. I'll bring up this. As you can see here, I'm not dropping frames, but as you can see here, I'm missing Intel HD because I need to enable that. So let's do that. All right, so now I've enabled Intel HD. You can see there it says Intel UHD graphics. So it's very important. I don't get fooled into thinking that the Ryzen is better for content creation because it's not, because you've got single core of Intel. You also have Intel integrated graphics, so you have quick sync. So it's going to be using both of these. Anyway, let's see with ProRes RAW, everything done there, what happens, what I'm using. First of all, green here. Okay, so no drop frames. And if we have a look here, we're using 100% of the GPU. So not the Intel UHD, it's using the NVIDIA GPU to do this and a little bit of the CPU. So that's good. All right, so I'm just going to copy and paste those settings onto this, which is ProRes RAW. So I just paste those attributes and everything the same. Yep, boom. So, oh, there we go. There we go. Now have a look at that. That looks wonky, right? Because one thing I haven't done to this, effects control, I haven't changed it to here, vlog. And there you go. Boom, it comes right back. Change that to vlog. Actually don't even know if the LUT's applied. So let's have a look here. We've got a LUT applied to that. And this one here, we do have the LUT as well. So that's good. And if we just look at those scopes, yeah, I mean, this one's a little bit more overexposed, but doesn't matter. Motorbike, all right, so this is H.264. So what happens here when I play this? All right, we're still using GPU plus. Now you can see we're using Intel HD as well, Intel UHD. This is why Intel's better for video editing on PC. Now, one thing is this doesn't look right. Now, this is flat footage, but it still just doesn't look right like on this monitor. And this is a HDR monitor. But I'll just bring it back up. On on the Mac, it looks no problems with this on the Mac. All right, so the darks are too dark now. Still, that red just looks wrong to me. So this might be an issue. So on the Mac, the red will look all right. We'll just leave it for now. This is how I'll sort of, you know, put it in HDR. And we can see there using... UHD graphic. Now, what do we use for this? This is here. This is HEVC. All right, HEVC, it looks like we are using 100% of the... No, we're actually using... So here we can see we're using UHD graphics and the GPU, so the 4090. So we're using both. All right. So as far as I can tell, actually, the scrubbing is really good. Pretty good. I'd say, honestly, the Mac, I think, scrubs a bit smoother with the H.264. H.265, no problems. That's smooth. But the H.264, 60 frames per second. It's still good, but I think the Mac is a little bit smoother there. But as you can see, are we dropping any frames? Not dropping any frames there. Dropping any frames here? No. Dropping any frames here on the 60 FPS, H.264, uh, no frames being dropped there, no frames being dropped here. So happy days, good scrubbing, everything works out. Now, the big deal here is how fast is this going to export from all these different, you know, H.264, HEVC, ProRes RAW, how is it going to export to HEVC 10-bit HDR? I showed you in Premiere on the Mac forget about it because you can't use hardware encoding final cut beautiful what's the time we've got to beat on final cut time we've got to beat on final cut exporting this is two minutes and 41 so let's see how long it takes to export so the time we've got to beat is two minutes and 41 that's what i do in final cut all right so the time we've got to beat is two minutes and 41 final cut pro m1 max macbook pro and what the hell is this uh 
What have they done to the media encoder? Uh, this is not how it is on the Mac. Oh, mate. They do my head in. Uh, what are we going to export? How do I do this? HLG, eh? Hey? All right. We do have ProRes RAW exporting. ProRes RAW is not an option, right? Because all ProRes. The reason is I'm going to be uploading like a 60 gigabyte file. That's not that's not doable. HEVC, HLG, that looks good. Okay, we'll do that. 40 megabits per second. Why is it only let me do 40? Include HDR10 metadata. Why not? And let's just export this. I mean, it's not exactly the same. Usually I use 50 megabits per second, so this is 40 megabits per second, but it's HEVC output in. We're going to do it to the desktop, and we'll just call it a test. So we've got to beat two minutes of 41. Let's go. All right, so... Two minutes 41 we've got to do. It doesn't look good so far. Six minutes. Six minutes. What? Now, one thing I did forget is we've got to go to hardware encoding. Your system does not support hardware encoding. If I include HDR10 metadata, I cannot use hardware encoding. I have to use software encoding, okay? Now, I don't use HDR10 metadata with the Mac, but I do use Dolby Vision metadata. So. I guess that's one thing I can't do on this. So let's go to hardware encoding now. Oh, phew. Hardware encoding. Let's export this. The time we've got to be is two minutes, 41. Let's do it. All right. It's going to be in the two-minute mark, so that's good. So what are we using here? We are using 100% of the CPU. And what are we using here? The GPU 100% as well. So it's using the hardware encoding. So it's actually using the 4090. So this is good. It's using the 4090. I can make this CPU faster. It's only going 4.7 gigahertz. I have an overclock that I've just left at stock. So it does 4.9, I think, max. Um, yeah, I should have overclocked it, but whatever. We'll just leave it standard. The MacBook Pro was standard. But you can see here, it's going to be within the two minute mark. It's going to be right there, I think. So now we're using Intel HD. See that? Right here, we're using Intel HD. If you can see here on this task manager, that's because we've finished the ProRes rendering, I think, and we're rendering the H.264. So now we're using QuickSync. This is why you want Intel, not AMD, with video editing. And we'll see what happens when, once we reach the HEVC. Does it go back to the GPU render only or does it use QuickSync as well? Important to enable that if you have a desktop system too. It's not on by default Intel HD. So, yeah, it looks promising. It looks faster, like it's going to be faster. Two minutes 40, it's got to be. And we've got one minute 30 up in the moment. It's going to be faster using Intel HD plus the GPU. And we're going to stop that once it writes it. Okay, right, 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 boom. One minute 46 versus two minutes 41 in Final Cut. So I've got to say now this is going to be faster. Now I'm not worried about a minute render here or there. Like that's like before. 100% the MacBook Pro was faster. Here we can see this is faster now. The 4090 is definitely faster. But in the timeline, it's just as good for scrubbing. I don't see a problem there. The only problem I've got is this doesn't look right, this footage. And it's just because it's SD content. And now I'm trying to change it into HDR, whereas Final Cut handles it really well. Like to me, this just looks, the color looks wrong. Yeah, I don't know what to say there. This looks all right, and this looks fine too. So anyway, yeah, it's faster than the MacBook Pro, so it's viable except I've got to work out the color on this because I can make this look beautiful HDR even though this isn't HDR, it's SD footage. I can make it look really good on the Mac and export it to HDR, no problem. Uh, but, yeah, here it just looks washed out and the red just doesn't look red. Anyway, there you go. Done.